Today I'm going to be doing some bead weaving, but on a giant scale. Hello my jewellery making friends, welcome back. If we're meeting for the first time, my name's Carol, it's lovely to have you along. On this channel we talk about how easy it is to make your own jewellery. Today's project is a stunning necklace, but it is so easy to make you will not believe how easy it is. So we're going to use the bead weaving techniques, but we're going to be using some tiger tail instead of thread, and we're going to be using some 10 millimeter beads. So let's take a look. I will walk you step by step through all of the things you need to do to make this necklace, as well as leave you links and talk about everything you need. What I have here in front of me are some of these beautiful 10 millimeter glass beads. Now they've got a glass outer but they have a silver foil on the inside and they are just stunning and I have them in blue and pink. As well as that I've got some little 3 millimeter platinum balls and I have these beads here which are a double ended teardrop and they're corrugated. As well, I've got a lobster clasp, I've got some wire guardians, I've got a couple of little 1.5mm crimps, and I've also got some magical crimping beads as well. And I have one 6mm jump ring, I've got some tiger tail, and I've got my bead stopper. As well, in terms of tools, I'm going to be using some flush cutters, I'm going to be using my magical crimping tool, and I'm going to be using two pairs of chain nose pliers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is cut our tiger tail. Now, I'm going to cut quite a long piece because you need quite a lot. So I'm going to cut about a meter. And I'm going to do that twice. So we need two meters of tiger tail. Oops, and I just spilt my beads everywhere. I'll pop that away, I don't need that anymore. And I'll just pick up these little beads. Here we go. All right, so I have two one meter long pieces. Now it's going to get tangled. Try not to let it get too tangled or too, too uh, creased. You can see there there's a little bit of a crease, but that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is put my bead stopper probably about 25 to 30 centimeters from the end. Maybe not quite that much. about that. So basically what I'm going to do is this piece here I need it to be long enough to go around the back of my neck. So if my necklace is going to stop here then I need this piece to be long enough to go around the back of my neck like that and attach a clasp. All right let's start stringing these beads. The first thing we're going to do is put on a blue bead. And we're putting it on both of the strands of tiger tail. So one blue one, one pink one through both strands, another blue one, and then another pink one. So nice and easy. Okay, so that's what I have now. Now what I'm going to do is put on a little crimp bead. Now I tried this without doing the crimp bead, so it's a really optional step, but I found that it sits better if I put a little crimp bead on here. So I'm going to thread both of my uh, wires through a crimp bead, not the magical ones, just the 1.5 millimeter ones. Now the best way to put on a crimp bead, and any bead actually, is to lay the crimp bead down on the mat and just push your wires through, kind of go fishing like that, with the crimp bead. Now I'm just going to run that right up, right up close to my pink bead there. Just don't let it disappear because it could easily disappear. Now you could do this uh, technique with any size bead, so I'm just squashing it there. And the reason I put it there was simply to hold the wires together at this point because next we're going to split them. So I'm going to take the other end with my, with my wires here and I'm going to thread on one blue bead on each wire. So one on that one, one on that one, 
and I'm going to thread those all the way down. So that's what I have now. Next I'm going to take, I'm going to separate my wires again and I'm going to put on a pink bead. So I'm going to put it on this way and then I'm going to put this wire through from the other direction so that the wires are going through the bead in the opposite direction. Now the first time I made this necklace, I did this and then I made it again and it sat perfectly and then I made it again and I forgot to put the wire through from either side and it wouldn't sit right and it took me ages to figure out why it wasn't sitting right. It was driving me crazy. All right, so just pull it nice and tight, pull it up and then we're going to put one blue bead on each of the ends again. I can probably show you that a bit closer actually. So that's what we have. And don't worry about the you seeing the tiger tail because it kind of melts into the background with the um, with the silver foil in the beads as well. All right, so one blue one on one side and one blue one on the other side. It's long pieces of tiger tail. It's not easy to show you the ends all at the same time. And then I'm going to go as I said as I did before each way through that pink bead. So one from one way, one from the next, and pull it up nice and tight. So that's what I have now. Now I'm just going to repeat that and right through to this blue bead on the other end and then I will come back and I will show you how to end this necklace. Now I've finished stringing and I've popped my crimp bead on here and added my extra four beads. So I have here, I have basically done the pattern one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, plus the two extra blue beads and then the four beads, the crimp bead and then the four beads. So that's the uh, focal part of my necklace. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread on some of these beautiful double teardrops and some of the little balls. So now I'm going to take one of these little uh, three millimeter balls. Once again, I'm going kind of fishing with the tiger tail for it rather than trying to thread it on because it's got a tiny hole. And just thread that down there. And uh, the reason I'm popping that on is because it kind of sits inside the bead there, just kind of tucks in and it kind of finishes off the work before we go ahead and do the rest of the necklace. So I'm going to now put on one of these teardrops, just squeezing the tiger tail together to get it through the holes. Okay, so that's what I have now. And now I'm going to repeat that until I have 10 of the teardrops on. These uh, teardrops do have quite small holes so if you're having problems getting the wire through just stagger it, put one through uh, at first and then the other one and it should go through without any problem. Okay so there's what I have now and before I go any further I want to make sure that it's going to fit me. So you need to make sure that it is going to sit in the right place and you need to allow about a centimetre for your clasp. So I think that is a little bit too long for me. So I'm going to take off two of my teardrops. 
because if I take it off it'll just sit a little bit shorter. If you are enjoying this project and you would like to see more of my super easy jewellery making projects then remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell and give me that little thumbs up. Okay so I'm going to take off my last teardrop and my last uh, three millimeter bead on either side. So now that's what I have. So you want to end with a teardrop, not a three millimeter. And the reason for that is because we're going to put on our crimp bead and it's a magical crimp bead, so it will actually look like a bead. All right, so next thing is to add the clasp. So to do that, I'm going to thread my two wires again through my magical crimp bead. Then I'm going to take one of my wire guardians and I'm going to thread my wire up through there as well. Now if you haven't used any of these things before I will leave some links in the description box below. One to uh, a video all about wire guardians and also one about crimping. So I've gone up through one side and I'm coming back down through the other. It's a little more tricky with um, both of the wires and you could crimp it and cut one off if you wanted to but it's not it's not too bad just getting them both through such tiny holes my fingers don't want to do what they're told today all right so just pulling the wire guardian down nice and close to the crimp bead pulling everything up nice and tight now you need the last thing you need to do is uh, thread the two ends back down through the crimp bead. If you have to pull it back a bit, you can do that just to give yourself a little bit of room to, to move. This crimp bead's got a little burr on it, it's making it a little difficult to get it through. Here we go, there's one. Two. Oh, it just doesn't want to go through. <laughs> I think I'll move everything back up a bit and give myself a bit more space. I've got it through one end, but not the other. For some reason, it just will not go through the other end. Come on. I can even see it. It just won't go through. Just grab my pliers. There we go. saying it was super easy that was a little bit challenging but it was only challenging because I couldn't get it through the hole all right when you pull it down just be careful not to um, twist it so that you get a kink in it all right so that's what I have and I'm just going to pull everything down nice and tight now and the way you do that is move your crimp bead down and then pull everything else down holding that loop at the top and then pull down through there and as, it's, as I said, it's more challenging than normal using two of the tiger tails, but it's still not that hard. All right. Now leave yourself a little bit of room. Don't uh, pull it up too tight. That's what I have. Now I'm going to take my magical crimping pliers and I'm going to uh, squeeze the crimp bead and turn it around and squeeze it again and again until I have a nice little round ball that looks like a bead. So that's why I didn't put that extra bead on there because I was going to put my crimp bead on there. Now normally when I crimp a necklace I go down through some of the extra bead, some of the beads as well but I haven't got room to do that. These beads are just the holes are way too small. So what I'm going to do is just take my flush cutters and cut that wire nice and close to the crimp bead. All right, so now I need to put on my jump ring. And so this is the end that the clasp does up into. So I'm going to take my two pairs of chain nose pliers and I'm going to open my jump ring. Now, if you haven't opened jump rings before, I will give you a, leave you a link and a card up the top uh, to a video all about it. Just opening it, popping it on and closing it up.
you want to make sure it's really nicely closed. Cool. So that's one end done. Now I'm going to put my clasp on this end. That's it. <laughs> so just the same way, threading it uh, both of the wires through the crimp bead. Hopefully it will go through a little bit better this time. And I'm going up through my wire guardian. Just like before. And back down. Now before I close this one up, I have to remember to put my clasp on. Because once it's there, once you've done it up, you can't take it, you can't open it. Okay, so thre threading the clasp on and popping that up through the through the wire guardian. Now I could have added an extra jump ring here if I wanted to and um, done it that way, but this works just as well. And it saves it saves a six millimeter length. Right, so now I'm just gonna pull it up and I'm going to do that by grabbing the wire at the loop. I've threaded it too, too close. There we go. Pulling everything down and then pulling that down. And it has to go back through the crimp bead. Oh dear, I'm having trouble with these crimp beads today. Let's, let's try this again. <laughs> Moving it back up. I should have put it through before I, I tightened it. Okay, so going down through the crimp bead. This time it went through with no problem. And I'm going to hold on to the top of those um, wires there coming out the top of the wire guardian. Pull everything down and then just pull it nice and tight. And if you need to do that, uh, need to, you can actually pull it with your pliers as well if everything's not going in nice and tight. But it is in my case, so that's what I have. Now I'm just going to crimp my bead using my magic crimping tool. Just exactly the same way as I did before. This is one of my favorite tools, this magical crimping tool. <laughs> and then just trim it off. As tight as, you, as close as you can get it because you don't want a sharp end. Okay. there is my clasp attached. I'll just do it up. All right. And there's my necklace. Isn't it stunning? I absolutely love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I told you it was going to be easy, didn't I? The hardest part was getting those two wires through that crimp bead. That was really the only challenging part. So here's my necklace. It's stunning and it's, it kind of sparkles in the light with the uh, silver foil beads. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, remember to subscribe, like the video, and of course, uh, ring that notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. If you're keen to make the jewelry I'm wearing today, well, I'm sorry you can't make this necklace because it is a vintage one that uh, belonged to my mum. However, I have recreated it and I've done a tutorial on both the necklace and some earrings to match and so I will leave a link in the description box below for that one as well. Thank you so much for watching today, have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.